breaking, Alabama race not over. Moore could still win after what happened overnight. If there's one thing we learned from the presidential election, is that some people will do whatever it takes to win. We constantly heard incidents of voter fraud taking place last November, where Hillary voters were voting multiple times, and buses of people were being be transported into key swing counties in order to throw the vote. With voter fraud now being found in Alabama, the Alabama Secretary of State is stepping in, with a move that could turn the entire election on its head. According to breaking reports, Alabama Secretary of State John Merrill is now launching a voter fraud investigation into the election of Doug Jones after a Jones supporter seemingly admitted to committing voter fraud. During a live broadcast, several of Jones supporters made the, the following shocking admission with the following statement that immediately raised eyebrows. We came here all the way from different parts of the country as part of our fellowship, and all of us pitched into vote and canvas together and we got our boy elected. Given that voter fraud and Democratic candidates have a tendency to follow one another Secretary Merrill stated to the media, well, it's very disconcerting when someone who's not from Alabama says that they participated in our election, so now it's incumbent upon us to try to identify this young man, to see what kind of role he played, if it was to simply play a canvassing role, or if he was part of a process that went out and tried to register voters or if he himself actually became a registered voter. When news broke of the investigation, liberal media publications and leftists lost their minds claiming that it was a Roy Moore conspiracy because he lost the election. In response Secretary Merrill said, I've got to do everything I possibly can to try and find this kid and figure out, was he just exuberant in his expression? Was he overly enthusiastic about what was going on? Those things make perfect sense to me. He's a kid, probably never been on TV before. If he had, he probably hadn't been on more than a couple of times, probably never been on TV in a situation that was that intense with that much going on. The special election between Roy Moore and Doug Jones was filled with controversy and suspected voter fraud seemed likely given how contentious and important this election was. During the election, Sexual misconduct allegations surfaced targeting Roy Moore with one accuser claiming that as a young teen girl, Roy Moore had gotten her pregnant. There were three additional accusers who had gone to the Washington Post with claims against Moore that he had in some form or another been sexually inappropriate with them. On November 27, 2017, the Washington Post confirmed that Jaime T. Phillips, the woman claiming to have been impregnated by Roy Moore was lying. Reporters from The Washington Post Sean Boberg, Aaron Davis, and Alice Greitz recounted their contact with Miss Phillips, who they later learned was connected with Project Veritas. Being responsible journalists, this team at WAPO said, in a series of interviews over two weeks, the woman shared a dramatic story about an alleged sexual relationship with Moore in 1992 that led to an abortion when she was 15. During the interviews, she repeatedly pressed Post reporters to give their opinions on the effects that her claims could have on Moore's candidacy if she went public. The article goes on to state that reporters found multiple inconsistencies in Ms. Phillips's statements as they suspected she was lying, and while investigating her, saw her enter the New York office of Project Veritas. Ms. Phillips's behavior with WAPO reporters was extremely suspect as she kept pressing them about the likelihood of Roy Moore losing the election when these now proven false allegations went public. There are other women who have come forward with sexual misconduct allegations against Roy Moore including Lee Korfman, who claimed Moore solicited her for a sexual relationship when Moore was a 32-year-old assistant district attorney. Three additional women claimed to have had sexual encounters with Moore when the teenage girls were all between the ages of 16 and 18. Wendy Miller, Debbie Wesson Gibson, and Gloria Thacker Deason are the other accusers who have come forward and spoken to the Washington Post. Roy Moore and his campaign denied the allegations pointing out that if these other allegations were true, they would have come to light during Moore's previous election bids. In a statement Moore responded to these accusers saying, These allegations are completely false and are a desperate political attack by the National Democrat Party and the Washington Post on this campaign.
As of this morning it has been confirmed by Alabama Secretary of State John Merrill that no voter fraud was committed. In a press release Secretary Merrill stated via a press release that, thanks to the help of concerned citizens interested in the credibility and the integrity of the electoral process, the Alabama Secretary of State's office was able to identify the young man who was anonymously featured on the news broadcast. After additional research was conducted, it was determined that this young man has lived and worked in Alabama for more than one year and is currently a registered voter in this state. The event surrounding this special election between Roy Moore and Doug Jones is representative of how desperate and conniving Democrats can be when they are backed into a fair fight. What is interesting here is that the Washington Post responsibly reported that Jaime T. Phillips was lying but seemed to confirm and sympathize with the other three accusers against Moore. Since the confirmation of no voter fraud being committed, it is not clear if Moore's three additional accusers will seek any kind of civil recourse or will otherwise pursue their allegations of sexual misconduct. Conduct.